Chapter 5.6, we're finding inverses of functions. So we're going to write a formula for the input of a function. So remember, the input is x and the output is y. So we're going to let f of x equals 2x plus 3. So solve y equals f of x for x. So what we're going to do is first we're going to substitute y for f of x. So y equals 2x plus 3. Now we're going to solve for x. So let's subtract 3. So y minus 3 equals 2x divided by 2. So now x equals y minus 3 over 2. So now we're going to find the input when the output is negative 7. So output means our y value. So let's plug it in to the original function. Oh, I'm sorry, into our inverse function. We have x equals negative 7 minus 3 over 2. So to notice the operations on here, number one is that in order to solve for this, the first thing we do is we subtract 3. And notice here, that's what we did there. So we subtract 3 first. We have negative 10 divided by 2. Next, in order to continue solving this problem, we would divide by 2. And notice that's what we did last when we're doing our inverse function. So this is x equals negative 5. So in example one, notice the steps involved after substitution for x and y equals 2x plus 3, and after substituting for y in the new equation. So if we were actually to solve, if we were going to try to solve for an x, if we plugged in, for example, negative 7 in here, in the x, the first thing we would do would be to multiply by 2. Now, notice that the opposite operation, divide by 2, is what we did later. And then the next thing you would do if you were solving for this problem for y, is that you would add 3. And then so notice that the other operation, the opposite operation, we would we subtract it by 3. So notice what these steps do. More than anything, we want to know, or we want to notice that the steps undo each other. Functions that undo each other are called inverse functions. So in example one, you can use the equation solve for x to write the inverse of f. Another way to rewrite that is f, it looks like to the negative one, but it's really just f inverse, okay? So just for notation purposes. And then what you're gonna do is switch the roles of x and y. So let's take a look at uh, the original function we worked at versus the inverse function. Because inverse functions interchange, they change the input and output values of the original function. The domain and range are also interchanged. So notice in the original function, so if we plugged in numbers to graph this graph here, the blue graph here, notice that we have negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 1, 0, 3, and so forth. Now, in the inverse function, notice that those same values now become our y values. And then if you look at the y values of the original function, the y values, notice what happens with those. The y values are changed now to the x values. So the biggest thing I want you to take away from that is that you can just switch the x and the y's to get the other graph. The graph of an inverse function is a reflection of the graph of the original function. The line of reflection is a little bit different. The line of reflection is this line here. It is the y equals x. So just thinking about graphing y equals x, you would start at 0, 0 as your y-intercept, and then you would go up one, right one, up one, right one, or down one, left one. That's how you come up with this line of reflection. And notice that it is absolutely flipped on that line of reflection. In the next one, we're going to go ahead and solve algebraically. We're going to find the inverse of a function algebraically. We're going to do that by switching the roles of x and y and then solving for y.